Good evening. Good President Moorhead, Provost Morris, Vice Presidents, Deans, Faculty, Staff, Graduates. Soon to be, not official till I sit down. Thank you so much for inviting me back here to this beautiful evening between the hedges. And hey, it didn't rain. I know somebody in the weather department, so we called in a favor. I am honored to be here tonight with my family, as, Dean, as uh, President Moorhead said. My siblings, Jackie, Janet, Tina, Belinda, Benita, my, my husband, husband Al, my, my son, Nick, and my, my daughter, daughter Leela, who flew in from Paris, Paris. They, they all just arrived. Just so I am really thrilled. Now, now enough, enough about, about me. me. Well, well, here you, you are. are. The, the day, day you, you dreamed of, up, sweated over, over shed, shed tears, tears about, about, no doubt lost a lot of sleep for, is finally here. here. After all those finals, self-doubts, all-nighters, after enduring for some of you pledging, hookups, breakups, and so many ramen noodles, you made it! It's really hard for me to believe that I was sitting just where you are sitting really not that long ago, feeling those same butterflies, breathless with satisfaction and excitement, Despite, despite the Georgia, Georgia heat, heat, praying that, that the commencement speaker would keep it short. Don't, Don't worry, worry, I remember. I realize, frighteningly, that I am the last lecture of your undergraduate career, and I promise not to torture you. Like so many of you, this was a particularly special moment of pride for me. I, along with my eight siblings, was among, was among the first, first in my family, family to go to college. Both, Both my parents, parents quit school. Yes, yes there's some of you out there who are those first generations. generations. Both, Both my parents quit school to help provide for their families in the harsh and brutal days of the segregated South. Mama and Daddy sat here on that blisteringly hot day on campus that had just opened its doors to the first students of color, Charlene hunter Gault and Hamilton Holmes, only 21 years before. Their chests swelling with joy as their seventh child claimed a milestone that they were denied. My dad barking, go dogs all the way. It's a moment, yes, go dogs. It's a moment I will cherish forever. I represented their wildest dreams. Well, today, you have that honor. And while you graduates have every right to own and bask in this moment, I don't have to tell you that you really owe a lot of it to the folks who've driven you crazy all day today, who've been in your corner all or most of your lives, who are sitting behind you tonight bursting with pride. You are here in caps and gowns because somebody cared about you and your future. Your parents and families, relatives by blood or by bond, got you to this moment. Some of them are looking at you through tears, others in bewilderment, wondering, is that really the baby whose bottom I wiped? That snaggletooth kid whose scraped knee I bandaged? That teenager whose sassy attitude I had to call in check? And whose high school scores led me to wonder if they'd ever amount to anything? Is this really happening, they may be asking? Families, yes they are, yes it is, and you did a wonderful job. Thank you for nurturing this collective body of hope and light, which we desperately need in the world right now. Graduates, we need your energy, your optimism, your creativity, and this is a big one, your kindness and compassion. You have grown up in a world where we have told you, boys and girls, that you can be anything you want, and you can. 
but I hope you'll also remember to be kind and caring human beings. We need some good citizens among us. I recently interviewed an esteemed professor from an elite university who wrote a memoir about her successful career and her struggles growing up as a biracial woman. She offered unvarnished stories about her challenges in life, telling how she was often frustrated and sometimes angry, until she discovered a different path and realized the power of looking for goodness in people and situations, recognizing that she couldn't find herself if she wasn't willing to find kindness and common ground in someone else. She didn't have to agree with every, everybody she met, she told me, but if she was going to learn and grow, she would have to practice what she called radical compassion. Class of 2019, you're stepping into a world that can use a lot of radical compassion right now. Now, while this is a night that is brimming with hope and beauty and blue skies, you know that outside, things aren't completely blissful. We're living in challenging times filled with tension, anxiety, and polarization. People are afraid to share their thoughts for fear they're going to be misunderstood or blamed or labeled in some negative way. In short, we're not talking to each other. We're just, We're just too afraid. afraid. But, but if you're, you're going, going to be compassionate, compassionate you, you need to connect with your fellow human beings. beings. And, and I don't, don't mean on Snapchat, Snapchat or Instagram, Instagram with, with happy, perfect, perfect filters. filters. In, fact, In fact, I'm, I'm still, still trying, trying to figure, figure out those filters, filters to take the perfect, perfect selfie. selfie. Maybe, Maybe some of you can help me tonight. But I want to offer you a challenge. My 16-year-old son, Nick, said, Mom, don't go there. Don't start talking about people's devices. They don't want to hear you. But I'm going to go, go for, for it anyway, anyway. So, so here goes. goes. Step, Step away from, from your devices for part of your lives to really experience your lives. Be, be the generation who values technology, but doesn't allow it to devalue you. With all the gadgets and apps and emojis and streaming platforms, we've never been more connected globally in our lifetime. But the research is saying that we've also never been more lonely, depressed, or anxious. Technology is a great blessing, offering boundless opportunities to discover and to know. But it's also a curse when we lose ourselves in it and use it to hide and divide. Recently, I was on a family beach vacation, and we all decided to put our phones away, our devices away for a good portion of the day, and spend time together. Well, let me clarify. I decided that we would spend time together and off our devices. You know mom's always thinking. I'm pretty sure my 16-year-old Nick cheated, and I'm pretty sure my husband did too. Okay, so I spent less time on my devices. And one, one evening while out for a walk, I noticed the most breathtaking sunset you ever want to see. The massive yellow ball sinking behind the ocean, its enchanting light penetrating the clouds. I almost burst into tears over the beauty of this sight. Impulsively, I looked for my phone and realized we were doing detox. I didn't have it. Oh no, what would I do? And, and suddenly, suddenly I was, I was hit, hit with, with that, that modern conundrum, conundrum of our times. If, if you, you have, have a surreal, surreal experience and you don't record it or share it, did it happen? Forget, forget the tree in the forest. forest. This, this is our modern problem. problem. What, what do we do, do with feelings that we can't immediately share on social media? media? Well, well, guess what? what? I, I shared, shared that experience with my family over dinner. dinner. I, I gushed and we talked. Imagine that. We, we actually, actually shared a special moment with words. Ditch your devices from time to time and step out from the safety of filters and anonymity. Live your real life. Have real conversations and see real people. Not for who they appear to be on social media or how many likes they have, but for who they are. And while you're at it, Make, Make it a point, point to see people who don't look, look like you, who don't think like you. 
you may learn something new if you're willing to open your eyes and open your heart. I'm convinced that this is the path to tearing down the walls of tension and misunderstanding, see each other, and know each other. The way you lead your lives matters. You can help change this world, and it won't cost you a thing. Today is May 10th. It's a day you will long remember. You may forget your commencement speaker, although I hope a few of you might remember. But I hope you will hold on to this feeling, this deep down in your gut reservoir of endless power and happiness and hope. Remember it. You're going to need it. Because things aren't going to go exactly the way you plan. Now, I wish you a straight line in life. I wish you great joy. I wish you great success. But I also wish you failure. Yes, you heard me right. I wish you spectacular failures in your life. They're not always fun or pretty, but they'll show you what you're made of. Just before our 20-year-old daughter headed off to college, we were still basking in the glow of her high school graduation. Fred, Friends and relatives sent beautiful gifts and offered all the appropriate accolades, much of what you probably heard today. You're brilliant. You're going to kill it. Look out, world. Here she comes. Then she opened a card from my best friend's mother. Miss Emily had sent a lovely check and included a few stunning words in her congratulatory card. This kind woman who hadn't gone to college herself said to my daughter, I wish you the best, and I know you'll do well. But, but be ready, ready to, to fail. fail. No, no one, one talks about failure, failure much, but, but it's, it's a powerful, powerful teacher. teacher. I was taken aback. Failure? failure? Why, Why would she, she go there during such a happy, happy time? time? My, My husband, husband read the card again and said, what a wise woman, an honest woman. woman. That's, That's the most poignant message I've read in a long time. time. Well, well, I wasn't convinced until last, last week when I was talking with my daughter about this day. And, and she, she said, Mom, Mom don't, don't forget, forget to tell them what Miss Emily said about failure. It's, it's something, something we all experience and we need to accept. She understood the lesson. Maybe it's even cushioned her a bit during her stressful freshman year. The legendary television trailblazer Barbara Walters, whom I'm proud to call a mentor, once said, I've learned far more from my failures than from my successes. And guess what? I have, I have too. too. That, that camera, camera work, work that, that I screwed up during my first internship at WMAZ in Macon just before my junior year here at school. I pressed the wrong button. We never got anything recorded. That miserable live shot that I blew big time at WBIR TV in Knoxville, Tennessee after I forgot to tell my boss I'd never done a live shot before. That rocky interview on Good Morning America. I could go on and on. Those disastrous moments could have torpedoed my confidence and my career, except for one small thing. This Georgia Peach discovered here at UGA, thanks to great professors like Kent Middleton, Al Wise, Dick Martin, and George Huff, that she's also a steel magnolia. Thanks to a strong foundation nurtured, nurtured by caring parents and this great institution, I discovered the meaning of the Japanese proverb, fall seven times, get up eight. I don't know that I would have had the temerity to report from all over the world, earning Emmy Awards along the way, if I had never learned what it is to get back up. Graduates, prepare to fall, maybe even flat on your face. And then, as Maya Angelou proclaimed, you rise and prepare to be stronger. You're all on the verge of so many exciting things. Some of you will make big names for yourselves. I may come, and come to you for an interview or maybe a job. But first of all, tonight, most of you are going to head out to a celebratory dinner with champagne, 
vodka and tonics, shots, beers. I remember Athens. I think my family went to the Sizzler Steakhouse and we drank iced tea. Your night will be much better than mine. Enjoy your night. Put your phones away for a bit of it. And as you step away from this beautiful campus, know this one thing. However you wound up here, whatever privilege you were or were not born with, however difficult your journey here has been, you are your ancestors' wildest dream. Congratulations, class of 2019. Welcome to the world and go long!